the Joe Rogan experience. Uh, and I go into the issue of ayahuasca uh, in, in this book because, um, I, first of all, ayahuasca is itself another example of Amazonian science. Um, as you and I and many of the, the, the listeners and viewers know, uh, the active ingredient of ayahuasca is DMT, uh, dimethyltryptamine. But dimethyltryptamine is not normally accessible through the gut. Uh, we have to smoke it or, or vape it to get that rocket ship to the other side of reality. And the journey lasts, what, 10, 12 minutes, not much more than that, and sometimes, sometimes quite a lot less. What ayahuasca does is it makes DMT available through the gut. The reason it's not available through the gut is because of an enzyme in the gut called monoamine oxidase, and that switches off DMT on contact. The ayahuasca vine, which is one of the two ingredients of the ayahuasca brew, the other ingredient is leaves that contain DMT. The ayahuasca vine contains a monoamine oxidase inhibitor, which switches off the enzyme in the gut and allows the DMT to be accessed uh, orally, which produces a rather different journey from the smoked or vaped DMT trip. It's a much longer journey. It's four or five hours. It allows you to integrate and to, and to interrelate with the strange landscapes in which you find yourself amongst. And the entities that you encounter. I'm not making any claims about the reality status of those entities, but what I am saying, and it's a fact, is that people who work with DMT and ayahuasca do encounter what they construe to be entities uh, who, who communicate with them intelligently. So somebody in the Amazon, out of 150,000 different species of plants and trees, selected two that are not psychoactive on their own, but when put together, create an extraordinary uh, vi vis visionary brew. Uh, and ayahuasca means the vine of the dead. And what it's connected to uh, in South American religious and spiritual thinking uh, is what happens to us when we die. Uh, and and uh, the Tucano, who are an Amazonian people who work regularly with ayahuasca, I mean, the Tucano actually will give a teaspoonful of ayahuasca to a newborn infant. They feel ayahuasca is so important that there is a hidden realm around us which we are not normally aware of and we need to be aware of it. And, and, and ayahuasca is an important part of that. In their ayahuasca journeys, the Tucano shamans experience visions, and they will then come back to an alert, normal, problem-solving state of consciousness, and they will paint and depict their visions. And what's intriguing, and I, I go into it in the book, is that quite a number of the Tucano paintings of the other world, of the afterlife realm, of the entrance to the other world, are geometrical, and they look uh, exactly like the geoglyphs. So I'm beginning to wonder whether these geoglyphs were part of a system of spiritual ideas uh, concerning what happens to us after death and what we need to do in this life to ensure a beneficial outcome. And Oddly enough, that same system of ideas is found in the Mississippi Valley. In the Amazon, it involves uh, particularly ayahuasca and the belief that the ayahuasca journey takes you to the afterlife realm and a journey along the Milky Way. In the Mississippi Valley, um, the mound builder sites up and down the Mississippi Valley, particularly Moundville in Alabama, exactly the same system of religious ideas associated with geometrical constructions that on death, the soul, they're very specific, ascends to the constellation of Orion, transits from the constellation of Orion to the Milky Way, makes a journey along the Milky Way, which they call the path of souls, and encounters challenges and ordeals where the soul must account for the life that it has lived. Then we go to Egypt, and what do we find? The same system of ideas. The soul must rise up to the constellation of Orion. There's a narrow shaft cut through the southern side of the Great Pyramid of Giza, which targets directly the lowest of the three stars of Orion's belt. Widely accepted as a star shaft or a soul shaft, the soul would rise up through that shaft, get to the constellation of Orion, which stands by the banks of the Milky Way. It would then transit to the Milky Way, which the ancient Egyptians called the Winding Waterway. And it would make a journey along the Milky Way where it would be confronted by challenges and ordeals. Very similar idea to the Tucano, very similar idea to the Mississippi Valley. As far as we know, none of these cultures were in contact with one another. Either we're dealing with a huge, unbelievable, extraordinarily detailed coincidence involving architecture and ideas, or we're looking at a legacy that was inherited in all of these different places from a remote common ancestor. And, and I believe that that's what we're looking at. What do we think the people from the ancient Mississippi Valley, the, that culture, what do we think they were using if they weren't using ayahuasca? Or do we think they, that's what they were using? Well, that's, that's, that's an interesting 
question whether whether visionary substances are the only way uh, to get into altered states of consciousness. And and uh, I would say they, they they are definitely not. Uh, of course, there are visionary substances which are which are used in Native American uh, vision vision quests. I've 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 had the privilege of peyote ceremony uh, with the Native American church. Um, I've never done that. What is that like? I, I loved it, actually. I thought, I thought, it, was, I thought it was amazing. It, it, it doesn't overpower you in the way that DMT or ayahuasca does. Uh, it's, it's, it's much gentler. It's much more, you feel much more integrated and connected with, with, with nature. Your thought processes are quite, are, are quite clear. It felt, it felt just like a very beautiful and healing experience. And I love the ceremony that I'm, in, I'm inside a, a teepee with, with 30 or 40 other people. And that there, are, there are specific roles that are assigned to those different individuals one will keep the door another will be responsible for the fire which is a work of art in itself just gazing into that fire and the glowing the glowing embers is enough to induce an altered state of consciousness uh, on its own incredible drumming which which drives your state of consciousness into a, a kind of peak peak experience this is a technology for accessing other levels of experience and other levels of reality and it's clear that the native americans had a number of advanced technologies in, in this area the sun dance doesn't use a substance but it uses austerity it uses pain to drive an altered state of consciousness the objective in every case seems to be let's just for a while, get ourselves out of the narrow, rigid frame of the alert problem-solving state of consciousness. We all need that. It's incredibly useful. Hunter-gatherers need it just as much as people in, in cities need it. But it's not the only state of consciousness available to human beings. And maybe that's one of the big mistakes that we're making in our culture um, and was not made uh, in, in shamanistic societies. <laughs>